Hello friends and felines and welcome back to my channel or if you're entering my channel for the first time today. Hi, hello and welcome. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave today. But we are in a little bit of a different setup. We are in my messy bedroom right now. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I've been saying I want to film a video like this for a little bit now and I just have never actually done it. But I think now is finally the time. Um, for those that are usually just on my channel for like makeup, skincare, and beauty type stuff, this video might not be for you, but in case you just happen to be here because you like hiking, then this is the video for you. So I'm just going to go into a little bit of my plan for the weekend. I'm going to hike some mountains, I'm going to take my sister with me. So if that's something that you are actually interested in and want to learn more, then definitely keep on watching. All right, so this might be a two-part video or not, depending on how long this is or how much I ramble on talking. Um, if I can get all into one kind of shorter video, then it'll just be one video and you can just disregard what I just said. Um, so like I said, I'm doing a hiking video. It's not gonna be like super fancy 4K because I'm not gonna be taking my nice camera with me hiking. I'm just too scared and I don't have like the proper way to like carry it and protect it while I'm hiking. So I'll probably just film actual hiking videos on my phone, but this intro part is just gonna be on my camera. I have been interested in hiking for a few years now and I never knew like how to get into it and how to get started. So I just, you know, started texting my one friend just to get the basics of, you know, how to hike the Adirondack Mountains. Now, no way am I any kind of professional now. I don't have all the equipment I need and all the equipment I want, but this is just like the basics. Um, so at this point in 2022, I have hiked nine Adirondack High Peaks, there are 46 total, and I have hiked six of the nine Lake Placid Niner Peaks. Um, so of the Adirondack 46ers, I have done Cascade and Porter. I actually got proposed to on top of Cascade at the summit. And then I got Tabletop and Phelps, Street and Nye, and I did Whiteface and Esther by myself. The rest of them I dragged my fiance along. Sorry, Jim. And then for the Lake Placid 9, like I said, I've done six of them, and again, I dragged Jim along. So this time, I'm finishing the Lake Placid 9 without him, just because like he knows that he's just not in shape yet to be doing these kind of mountains and this kind of strenuous activity, and I happen to save the last three as the hardest three. So there's that. So yeah, I'm not dragging him along this time. I'm gonna drag along my sister instead. And I'm so excited just to show her like my love for the Adirondacks and just the beauty that there is up there. Um, so I'm really excited. So for Lake Plasta 9, I just have three left. I have Catamount, Pitch Off, and Hurricane. And Hurricane is like the tallest and it has a fire tower at the top. So that's what we're planning on doing. I'm filming this on Thursday, April 28th, so tomorrow, Friday the 29th, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to get out, go pick up my sister, and then head up to the Adirondacks, get up there, there probably won't be any daylight left, and then set up a tent in the night, wake up super early Saturday morning, go hike Catamount, rest, stretch, eat some food, and then go over and hike Pitch Off. And then, you know, maybe go out to eat or like hit up a brewery or a pub or something up at there. Like I like the Lake Placid one or there's the Big Slide Brewery. Um, both are really nice spots. So, and then we're going to go to bed and wake up to hike Hurricane Mountain and then come back. That's the game plan. Plans always change. There's always plan A, B, C, D, and E. Um, I'm just a little bit worried because it just... It keeps snowing up there like it needs to stop so like I don't know that's why I'm sticking with like the lower elevation ones but like hurricane is still like at 3600 feet so there's still gonna be some snow I'm just hoping it's not a lot of snow that you need snowshoes for because I don't really have any right now that's something that's on my list to get but if it's something that we can deal with with like micro spikes or crampons and not leave post holes and not like have it take 10 hours then we'll try it but like I said we'll take it by ear all right, so I think I'm gonna go in and just show you guys all the stuff that I have. I'm kind of packing for both my sister and myself. She doesn't have a lot of like hiking and camping gear, so I'm bringing stuff that she can use and then she just has to pack clothes. So let's get into all the gear. 
All right, this is all the stuff, I think, for the most part, that I will be packing into my bags. I'm not really packing lightly because our campsite is right by the car, so we can just leave most of the stuff in the car. We're not hiking into a campsite. So I guess we're going to start off, first things first, with the packs. So this is my big pack. It is an Osprey pack. Um, most of my equipment I got from REI, so I will have everything linked if I can find a link for it. So this is like a 65 or 75 liter bag. This is my big bag that I put all of my like 10 sleeping bag, all that stuff in it. Um, I have hiked to a campsite with it. It's still really doable. You could probably get up to like 40, 40 pounds in it maybe. Um, depending on how much stuff you put in there. So that's the big pack. This is the one that I'll be hiking with. This is like a little bit of a day pack. Um, it is a camelback version. I really like it. It might be a little small if you need to carry a bunch of stuff, but I like it because it has a water bladder that has three liters that you can fill in here. So I got to fill that tonight. And then my sister is borrowing um, a day pack similar to this from Jen. And then all of her stuff will be going into this Atlas 65 liter bag. So I'll be putting her sleeping bag and stuff in there. Sorry if the camera's a little wobbly and it looks weird. And my cats interrupt but this is our tent this is the eureka summer pass three it is three season if it's up to it says three people i'm gonna call bullshit on that i think it um comfortably fits two what i like about it is that there's extra room on like especially the one side that you can put your pack and shoes and stuff underneath and you get the tarp and nothing gets wet um i've only used this a couple of times i really like it again we got a rei um it's not I don't know what the weight of it is. Oh, it says right there. Six pounds. So, I mean, it's kind of heavy. Again, I'm not hiking in super far with it. There are ultralight versions you can get, um, but this will do for now. All right, I have my sleeping bag over here. This is one that I just used from Jim. It's from the North Face. This is the Cat's Meow. Um, I think technically this is a summer bag, but it does work in cooler temperatures. The temperature this weekend says low in the 20s and then up to 50 or 60, so it shouldn't be too bad out. We've also hammock camped using that sleeping bag in October when it was like 30 out, so it's doable. And then I have a bunch of different mats to put on underneath to help insulate. Um, so we've got like the eggshell ones, and then I have a couple like air mattress ones over there. So that's what we can sleep on. All right, let's go into clothes next. I overpack clothes like crazy. Everything you want to consider moisture wicking and synthetic material. You don't really want to be wearing cotton because it will just absorb moisture and like not dry. Um, so I actually bought these socks um, for the Marines. These are the Fox River. They're kind of expensive, but I love hiking in these. Um, they're like a great boot sock. And I also, um, oh, my sister borrowed them, splurged on the darn tough socks. Any wool sock will do just fine. And then I like using some sort of like um, thinner boot sock underneath. So these are the REI ones. Um, or any like a dress sock too will also help. And I obviously bring a bunch of different socks to change in and out of, either for sweat or mud. I just want to make sure I have nice, dry, warm feet at night. And then a pair of fuzzy socks for the ride home. Because um, I just love being able to have comfy shoes on the way home. So, obviously underwear. Lots of it because booty sweat. Pants and stuff. Um, I do have leggings. I'll hike in leggings sometime. These are the Power Holds by Fabletics. They're my favorite leggings. They do not move. They hold everything where it's supposed to be. These are kind of a pair of insulated, water-resistant REI pants. Um, I do not recommend these because they were originally like $80 and I think I had points. So like I only paid like $10 for them and I worked a hole in them like super easily. Um, these are definitely a pant you want to put on over leggings or something if you want a little bit of water resistance. But they are not waterproof and they're super like lightweight. Um, but as a second layer they do keep you a little warm. I also thrifted these Columbia pants. These are a little bit lighter. Um, I haven't tried wearing them yet, so I don't know much about them. And then again, I splurged on these pants. These are from Prana. I love these pants. These are my go-to hiking pant. They dry so fast. So again, either um, moisture wicking or super fast drying time are your go-tos. 
Um, I have a few pairs of gloves. I just have like regular ones. These aren't ideal. I don't really have a lot of good gloves. And then I have like these running gloves. Um, I don't think I'll be using gloves because I'll probably get too warm and my hands are like the first thing that sweat. And then I have like an ear muff to keep my ears warm just in case. Um, again, I need a lot better moisture wicking base layers, but for my shirts, I usually have like a few short sleeve, um, just athletic dry fit kind of material and a few like random long sleeve ones of the same material. And I just layer up as needed. Obviously, bunch of sports bras because boots sweat. All right, jackets. My sister lent me this one, Coyoten Outdoor. Um, I've never even heard of them, but it's a nice lightweight one, it has a hood. Again, I have a Prana one that I thrifted um, that is wool. I haven't really hiked in this yet, I don't think, um, but I do like it. It's a good layering jacket. And then I have this nice lighter windbreaker. This is a Columbia one, um, water resistant, not waterproof. Um, my sister is going to borrow the other heavier Columbia, Columbia jacket I have, but I definitely want to invest in like a Gore-Tex shell, um, for definitely like colder temperatures or winter hiking. All right, cooking. So we have these MSR, like little stove top things. Once these run out, I want to get the jet boil. So basically your fuel's in here, you put a little sand on top, and then you boil some water in one of these cans. Um, we're going to have like the Mountain House dehydrated food for either breakfast and lunch. Um, it's just the weekend away, so we don't need a lot. We are bringing a shit ton though. Um, so then we can just have, you know, like our cooking wear and sports and food. So just a basic setup. And then just a bunch of like random shit. So I have a bug net um, for your face. There shouldn't be any bugs. We're bringing just in case. I thought this was a safety blanket, but it's not. It's an emergency poncho, but I'll just bring it. Like I said, I don't have any snowshoes at the moment, so hopefully we don't need them, but I have my heavy duty crampon. These are the black diamond ones. These are really good if there's solid ice or you need to like climb up like an ice wall. And then I have my hill sound, um, just like regular trail spikes. I haven't used these yet, but these are like the a lot smaller spikes, just good for like a little bit of ice and snow. Um, so like they just go in that nice little pouch right there. So we have both of those in case my sister also needs to use them. I have a water filtration system. This is the Sawyer squeeze filter one, I think. Um, super easy to use. You just fill up these bags with water and then squeeze it through the filtration system into a regular water bottle. Um, we have a water source right in our campsite that I love and it's so easy to get water with, so we can fill up at night if needed. Obviously an up-to-date trail map and a compass. Um, we don't really have a GPS, it's kind of like out of date, so I need to get a new one. Toiletries, I have foot powder, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, baby wipes, um, we have some DEET, again, bugs shouldn't be that crazy yet, but hopefully not. Tissue paper, um, for your booty and your nose, we just have a bunch of random paracord, headlamp, and extra batteries, um, a giant flashlight for like the tent and stuff, and then we have all of our food. All right, so all our foods in here is, like I said, we have the Mountain House meals. So I think we have like a couple of spaghetti and meat sauce ones. I did bring a breakfast one, like scrambled eggs, just in case. I don't really like to eat a lot of breakfast in the morning, but this might be good on day two. Obviously need some hot sauce with that. Again, you just pour hot water into those and seal them up. Um, we have some like Triscuits and stuff. Uh, I want to try these out. Um, the Noon tablets, I haven't tried them yet. They have like an electrolyte one and one with like energy. Again, it's just like a tablet you put into water and voila. But I have been using obviously the liquid IV. Everyone knows and loves these. Um, I love them. I really do think they help keep you hydrated. I also want to try like Calwin. It's a different version. These are my go-to. Like these are a whole meal in a protein bar. It's 20 grams of protein. This is like the supreme flavor. And I think they're like 280 calories. Yeah, like these are ridiculous. So these are a really good um, just protein bar in the morning. That's probably what I'm gonna eat. Um, I have some beef jerky. We have some pistachios. Um, we also have like the Luna protein bars, chocolate cookie dough flavor, slaps. And yeah, and I think Ral's gonna bring some like trail mix and stuff. So like that's all the food that we have with us. Just look at her over there. Just chillin'. Just chillin'. 
crooked. My camera's severely crooked, but oh well. <laughs> so like I said, that is pretty much everything. Oh, I didn't even tell you about my poles. Um, so I have like these black diamond poles. Um, I love them. Like, they've never failed me. And if there's a little bit of snow, you can put these on. So it steps on top of the snow. And then I don't know what kind Jim has. Jim is letting Rael borrow his. Um, so he has Le Lecky poles. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's had these for a while. Like I said, he's got a lot of like random hiking and camping stuff from Boy Scouts. So like a lot of his stuff is dated. But yeah, that's everything that I have for gear. There's obviously a lot on my list I need. Oh, I need to find where the um, first aid kit is. I don't have any bear spray. I should probably get some of that. Um, snowshoes is on the list and like better clothing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. I'm going to pack this all into my bags, be ready to go to throw it in the car, and then we'll be off. All right, we are out here. We are at our campsite by Giant. My sister has joined with me. Um, so we finally got our tent set up. I mean, that took probably like half an hour yeah, <laughs> in the dark. Too bad. Nah, not too bad. This is a pretty simple tent. Again, this is like the Eureka three season tent. Um, so yeah, it is currently 10 o'clock. We are going to just pass the F out, have an alarm set for 5.15 in the morning. And we're going to get up and get at it. So we will see you in the morning. All right. We finally found where we're supposed to be for our first hike of the day, which is Catamount Mountain. We are in the parking lot. It's about, what time is it? Like, like 6.40. 640. It took us a little bit longer to get over here. Got lost a little bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, now we're eating protein bars to fuel up and we're going to get started on our hike. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, it's super sunny. We are finally starting Catamount. We have signed in at the register, so in case we die, they can find where our bodies are. <laughs> so we're ready to get going. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'll double up. <laughs> We're getting up there though. So I got a ways to go. Yay! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Just had to put crampons and trail spikes on because I had a little bit of an icy patch. Yeehaw, that took like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are at the bump on Catamount. Just one final push to the summit. A few hundred feet of elevation to go. How you feeling? Actually, not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get up and you start seeing the views, that's when it really, you know, gets you excited and gives you that final push of energy. So, we'll walk over here. There's white face way in the distance right over there. Still has snow already hiked that so and it's sunny bluebird days all right we made it to the chimney so exciting this is what makes me happy that's gonna be fun definitely just incorporate all hands and feet <laughs> up 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 so this is flat, looking straight ahead, and that's looking up at her and her booty. <laughs> yeah, so cool. This is what I love. All right, I don't know if you can see, but we just squeeze down that and get up to this beautiful view. What a beautiful panorama. A little bit of water or cloud inversion over there. I can't tell. Might be a cloud inversion. We just gotta follow the crack. Heck yeah, look at her use that crack. Keep the grip. 
and scale the mountain face. <laughs> And to the top she goes. Woohoo! Yay! That is our mountain. We have officially summited the bump. Whew. Oh, time to keep pushing forward, but last stretch. You did it. You're up here. Oh, almost perfect 300. 60 degree views. It took us two hours to get up. A little bit longer than anticipated, but we did it. Lake Placid Niner number seven. Ooh, I am out of shape, but we made it. And we got white face in the background. Beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes going down is not as elegant as going up, but we do whatever we can to get down safely. Woo, we are done. 11.10, officially four hours to do that. <laughs> a little bit longer than we expected, but there were some technical areas yeah. that you guys saw. So we're gonna sign out. We're gonna take our boots and socks off, eat some food, chill, and evaluate what we're doing for the rest of the weekend. Because <laughs> we are both out of shape, so yeah. We're in the Adirondack Mountains, sitting in the Adirondack chairs. Wow. Good morning. It is Sunday, May 1st. Happy 1st. Oh, another day, another dollar. We, I look freaking exhausted. <laughs> um, it is, what, currently like 6? Mm, it's currently almost 6.30. So we're getting an earlier start than yesterday. We're going to start pitch off and drive home right after. So let's get started. All right, we just signed in and here we go. I think it's about two miles up to the summit of Pitch Off. Yeah. Hurdles. Yeah, that was a good slower one to do. Although, probably not with your knee. No, I was just gonna say my knee is fine. Yeah, this would probably be a very muddy trail. It's already, yeah. Oh, the sun's peeking through on the video. It's cool. Oh, you got to go a lot lower than you think. I also thought I carried it when I did it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that stretched my hips though. That felt good. <laughs> Just starting to get into some elevation gain. Lots of big boulders and rocks. Hey, yay, yay. Yay. All right, we made it to Balanced Rocks in about an hour. We just took a bunch of photos up on the iconic rocks. Um, we're not doing the iconic <laughs> jumping across the rocks. It's totally doable, but like both of our joints already hurt. And like last thing we need to do is get injured while we're up here. So we're just playing it safe. But look at these views. I can't even. You can see some like loose stuff in there, right over there. Some water. I believe that's Algonquin, Colden over there. That might be Marcy. Not exactly sure, don't quote me. That might be the backside of Big Slide. 
that's Cascade borders behind it. And from the rocks over there, we can see our car on the ground. <laughs> so we've come a long way. All right, so I think we're about at the summit of Pitch Off. It's mostly wooded. There is a little bit of a view back there. So yeah, we've been hiking for an hour and like 50 minutes and about 2.1 miles. So we're here. All right, so have another little viewpoint. You can see through the trees. We're not gonna go all the way like the 0.10 mile, tenth of a mile, because uh, it's just a lot of ice and we really don't wanna break out the crampons and the trail spikes. So we're just gonna accept these views. He had plenty of views at Balance Rocks and we're just gonna hike down because we wanna take our time because there's some sketchy parts. So back down we go. So I'm currently editing this video and I realized I didn't do any kind of outro. So we end up finishing both Catamount and Pitch Off and Balance Rocks. We did one on Saturday and one on Sunday, but doing Hurricane, which is not in the books for this weekend. Um, both of our joints were hurting. We're both out of shape. And this was like my first hike of the season. So we just saved Hurricane for another day. Um, I ended up going back out in the woods with my sister to do her first high peak, um, which was Big Slide, which was number 10 for me. And then we did Hurricane the day after. So I was able to finish the Lake Placid 9. Um, I like to film more videos, but some of the longer hikes, I don't want to kill my phone battery. Um, so right now I am at 15 high peaks and I have one more scheduled um, in the fall. And then that'll probably be it for the rest of the year. So I don't know if you guys like these videos, I can do some more, but I'm not going to be like a professional hiking Adirondack vlogger. There are plenty of other people that I can recommend that make awesome videos. Um, I just do this for fun and just because I want to share a little bit of one of my favorite places on this planet. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. I love you guys and subscribe to my channel. I welcome you to Feline Family. Bye!